Hi everyone and welcome to this new Waldini adventure. In this project we will model, rig, animate and sim this product shot from start to finish. It's packed with valuable information and if you enjoy my videos you'll like this one too. This will be a Patreon project for the month of November, but I will make the first part for free here on YouTube. If you like what you see or would like to have a peek at this course, continue watching this video for the modeling part and we will continue on Patreon right after this video ends. Hope to see you there, thank you and enjoy! So guys, let's get started by modeling the container first. So I'm gonna start uh, with the grid. That will be one by one in size and two rows and two columns, so we don't have subdivisions at all. Then I want to have, so if we look at the point numbers, I want to have point zero in one of these corners, so I'm gonna sort because we're going to do um, adjusted bevel on these corners. So let me just shift the point order by two, so we have zero in here. Then we're going to create the bevel attribute, so attribute to just float, and that's P scale. And I'm just going to set a constant value of 0 0.5 and the default value for the other ones at 0 0.2. And now if we do a bevel, poly bevel, and we do based on points, and for the amount we're going to set it to 1 and eight divisions and I'm gonna do a scale by attribute uh, so default oh uh, I'm gonna do the attribute that just fo floats on all but zero so we get this result oh not here sorry on the attribute that just floats so all but zero and we get this sort of result so one corner is more the other corners are more beveled than the number the number zero. So that's fine. Let's save and do a clip for now to divide this into two parts. <clears throat> and we're gonna do a clip on the X and Z, so a diagonal clip, and do 0 0.15. And we will keep using these values. And I'm gonna do alt primitives. Let me just make sure. I am doing this properly, yeah. And then we're gonna save the clipped edges and the above and below primitives. So we have some groups to play with. Let's create a null, null, and call this base. Let's just give it some color, and that's fine. Then we're going to extrude this, to inset this, I mean, so extrude. And we're gonna do individual elements and inset by 0 0.055 something like that <clears throat> and then we want to save the extrude front group from there we're gonna blast or isolate that group so the extrude front the inside we're gonna do a resample since this doesn't have geometry in the middle, we can easily do a resample. We just want to round off these shapes. So a length of 0.05. And then we're going to do an attribute blur. And we're going to blur with three iterations. And don't pin border points. So we get this sort of result. Then we're going to merge in the base. So object merge the base. And we're going to do a boolean. So boolean, I believe, is shatter I used. Yeah, it's shatter. And we need to set this to surface and surface because this doesn't have thickness. And we're going to do just a boolean in here. And we get this sort of result. Now, let's group delete the extruded front. And keep the others. Then we're going to triangulate. So triangulate, which is the divide node. Because we will go through a uh, quadri mesh right now. Then we can fuse. And in order to have a better result with the quadri mesh, we're going to remesh this quite a bit. 
and remember we let me just remesh this first and I will tell you what I mean so remember we have these groups that we need to harden in here otherwise we don't uh, keep the groups correctly so we have above and below and we want to keep these groups even after a, a, even after the quad remesh so unfortunately the Aldini quad remesher doesn't work that well so I'm gonna have to use the exocyte one again if you're serious about um, Odini and this sort of stuff, you really should consider buying at least quad remesher. I don't use many plugins in Odini, I try to avoid them, but uh, Exocyte quad remesher is such a powerful plugin that I really advise you to buy it. And it's not expensive, and is, uh, um, it is uh, forever. You keep it, uh, it's a perpetual license, so you don't have to pay each month and whatnot, so it's always uh, a good deal. I think it's about $70 or something. So I'm gonna set this exocyte quad remesher to use primitive group boundaries to keep the, the remesh consistent. I'm gonna change this to 248. I'm gonna disable this and the other things can be left as default. And let's look at the result. And... Oh, sorry guys, I know why, because I forgot to add in here the A polys group. So where is that? Uh, B polys, I mean. So this one inside. And now when we quad remesh, we should have the that group in there, that that edge flow. And now it's looking better. Let me lock the node. So even if you don't have quad remesher, you can access it. So now we want to do a group transfer. Uh, let's see. And but as you can see, it won't be perfect. So first of all, what I'm, uh, I'm going to do is to reduce this distance threshold to 1 and to have a proper transfer we need enough polygons so I'm gonna just do another remesh in here and I'm gonna set this to Arden Edge Groups and do let's say 0 0.01 and now we have a perfect group transfer. So you can easily see how this is such a powerful workflow with this exocyte quad remesher you can even transfer groups and have the different edge flow uh, uh, going properly so yeah i hope i convinced you to get a quad remesher anyways i'm gonna leave this locked and you can ac access the file from here and continue doing the the tutorial so i'm gonna do a name not this one name from groups which is just a preset for the name node and i'm gonna name the above Oops, above and below. So I want a name attribute from those groups. Let's see that. So name and we have a name. Now, <clears throat> here's the thing. I want to reverse this name. I'm not sure I can do below and above. No, it won't work. So we have to do some work in here to, re to order these groups pro properly because I know I'm gonna need it later. So just follow me, it will be simple. First of all, we're gonna create uh, an array called names and it will be a unique vals of uh, prim attributes. So prim and we want the name. So this just will output below and above the group that we have in here. So let's see, below and above. Those are not great names, but let's keep it for now. Now we're gonna reverse that array names. That should be simple to understand. And then we're going to set to reorder the, the attributes. So let's do in, in index. We're gonna do a find to find the index of of that name so we, since we reversed we will have it in the reverse order of course so we, we just found the index and then we can just set name with the following expression so we're gonna select names from the names array that we have as a variable and I'm gonna just do an offset so idx plus one and we can just um, modulo to the length of the names which is just two and let's see if that works. Well, it doesn't because I probably done some mistake. So, modulo length names. 
this is correct, names, asset name, int, idx, names, reverse names, uni oh, we need to set this to primitives, of course, so we get the reverse. And I'm gonna name it reverse, reverse name. That was a bit of work, but hopefully you got something out of it. Then I'm gonna do a group from attribute boundary. And let's see, let's just do boundary. Oops. And we're going to remove UV and just say name. Uh, and we don't want to include and share the edges. Oh, no, not to include and share the edges. And yeah, we get this edge in the middle. So that's our boundary. Then we're going to do a simple UV texture and a projection on the Y will be fine but as you can see it's a bit reversed so I'm gonna reverse this in here and since this will go why I can't view my UVs? what's going on? let me reset the viewport so apparently I can see my UVs but anyways trust me uh, if we reverse we need to offset to get to the UV tile 1001 so the first tile of the UVs I'm gonna fix, I'm gonna restart so they need to have the UV view back. Then we're going to save a rest because we will need it later. And I'm gonna just create a null and call it top. And let's just color this. Alright. Now we're going to branch off in here and do a vertex split and we're gonna split it not based on normals but based on name which will mean we will have this separated right yeah and let's do a poly extrude r and i'm just gonna extrude one of the groups which is the oops B polys and we're gonna set the distance to minus 0.2 to work on this container and then we're gonna save the output the extra front as base container because we will take advantage of that later and the rest is fine just add a normal and I'm gonna set the cusp angle to 55 for now then we will do another poly extrude oops and this poly extrude sorry i forgot to do something in here when we do this poly extrude as you can see this is just going down and i notice in the reference that this does a little tapering so we're going to spine control yeah uh, spine control yes so let's go to spine control and here in the thickness ramp we can decrease this one so let me check in here i have one and in the last one i have 0.8 so let me change that to 0.8 and we get this little tapering as you can see which will work better all right now we want to add the thickness to the to the mesh because right now we have a single single geometry single sided so in this case I'm gonna set this to 0 0.009 and I'm gonna save the extrude front and I'm going also to output the back and we get this result don't don't worry about the UVs we won't need UVs at all but we can easily do that with a UV unwrap node or something like that so don't worry about that right now let's create an all let's group promote the boundary the boundary group the boundary to I believe I'm gonna promote it to primitives let me just check in here yes I'm gonna promote it to primitives but for some reason this is not working why is that let me check my group again so let's go to point to edges boundary uh, something is fishing around here uh, primitive groups so we are saving in here the boundary right that's correct let me check in here on my file 
sorry, I forgot, we don't want to save edges, we want to save points, so it preserves better the geometry, the group, I mean. So now when you convert to primitives, we will have this. And finally, we can manipulate it, so let's do a group expand, and we will expand the uh, boundary, and boundary, and we can just do a step of one and then we do yet another one because I want to isolate these inner primitives to set a grease attribute and I'm gonna do two steps and we get the interior ones if we do an exploded view uh, let's do it before and we get let's get rid of the attributes as you can see we get the interior ones which I want to crease so group expand that's fine now let's do a small poly bevel so poly bevel this is un unnecessary but just for for visual fidelity let's do a distance of let's let's do a distance of 0 0.0005 and I'm gonna do ignore flat edges and do let's say 59 and two divisions will be enough Let's see, that is just cre uh, creating a bevel to help on the subdivision. Now, let's do a crease. And we will do a crease based on those primitives. So, boundary. Let's do a crease of 10. And now, when we do a subdivide, and one will be fine. As you can see, those primitives will be creased. If we don't do that, this will round off, which I don't want. After doing the subdivide, we can just add a normal. And I don't think I did anything. Yeah, just default settings. Create an all. And this will be out. Container. Okay, guys, not very exciting so far, but we accomplished already the most of the modeling. And next, we will do the rigging. Let's do that in the next part.